There are many ways you can go about navigating through your document, the least of which is that you can use the scrolly button on your mouse to scroll down or up. And if you don't have one or you don't want to use it, the other options you get is over to the far right you have the scroll bar that you can go ahead and click on the down arrow to scroll down line by line or up line by line. Or if you want to go a little bit more of a jump, you can go ahead and click on the scroll bar, hold it down with the left mouse button, and you can see over to the left hand side you get a pop up tells me the page that I'm on that I can go ahead and drag down really fast. And you can see it changed to page four, but you don't have to go that fast. But if you have tons of pages, like hundreds, ooh, that scroll bar gets super tiny. And when you click and drag it, man, that's going to jump. So that may not be the best option. Let me slowly scroll back up for larger documents. So some other options you can get is by right clicking on the scroll bar and say that you want to scroll here. Well, not here where the scroll bar is at. So let me click off and say that I want to right click and scroll here. And it takes me to that point. Cool. Let's right click again, and we can go to the top of the document, right click to go to the bottom. You can also page down. It doesn't go to the next page, it just advances several lines, more so than going line by line. You can right click and go page up, or you can do the incremental line by lines as we just did by clicking the up and down arrows on the scroll bar by clicking on scroll up, and it goes up one line and down one line at a time. And you'll notice that when I don't move my mouse after several seconds, the scroll bar disappears. That's okay, just move your mouse to make it reappear. Now some shortcut keys to help you navigate through your document, let me go ahead and click over here, is that if you want to get to the beginning of the document, you can hold down the control key and hit home, it takes us to the beginning, or control end to take us to the end of the document. Not control the letter N as Nancy, because if you do that, you'll get a new document. But hey, congratulations, now we know how to create a new document by holding down control and the letter N. In any case, we also have the page up and page down keys on the keyboard. Page up takes us up several lines at a time. It doesn't take us to the top of each page, but if you want to be able to go to the top of each page, then hold down the control key while you're hitting page up or page down. So if I go page up, it takes me to the top of the next page, or page down, it takes me to the top of the next page going down. And you can see my cursor is flashing there. You can also use the arrow keys to go right, left, down, or up. And if you want to be able to advance a little bit more than just character by character, or in this case, letter by letter, hold down the control key, hit the right arrow key, and it goes word by word. Oh, my word. And control left to go left. And if we want to be able to go to the beginning of the line, you can hit the home key on the keyboard. There's the cursor. And then to get to the end, hit the end key, and it goes right to the end of the line. Now, what about selecting text? We want to learn how to select text because if we want to be able to apply formatting, we want to make sure that we do it right and select what we want to format. So to select text, you can simply just click and drag to select your text. And if you want to select additional text, but not linearly, where it's not right next to it, but like this part and also a part down here, hold down the control key and click and drag. And if you made a mistake, um, you want to start over because if you're like, oh, let me go back and do it again, and you click and drag, uh, that's not going to work. Because you see my pointer, and just below it, it has a plus sign. That means it's going to copy that. Congratulations, now we know how to click and drag a selection to create a duplicate of it. And if I let go, you see that? Yeah, that's not going to work. So, when it comes to clicking and dragging to make a selection, you want to click off and click and drag to reselect. Because if you click and drag the selection, well, you see what happens. And then you'll notice that when you click and drag and you let go, you get the mini formatting toolbar that appears up and to the right. So when I move away from it, down and to the left, it starts to fade away until it disappears. That way, if I want to be able to apply some quick formatting to the selected text without coming up here on the ribbon, oh, see, I moved too far, now it's not going to reappear. Unless I want to go ahead and right-click on the selected text, then it reappears, or click off, click off, and then click and drag to reselect it, then it reappears. Then I can go ahead and do bold, underline, well, you get the idea. Deselect it to get rid of it, or you can go ahead and hit undo. You can also, let me click off, double click just to select an entire word, or triple click to select an entire paragraph. Now, what defines it as a paragraph? As you recall in an earlier training video, when you come up here on the Home tab to the Paragraph group and turn on the Show Codes, whenever you hit the Enter key on the keyboard, it leaves behind a paragraph marker. So from here to that second paragraph marker, everything in between is a paragraph. 
So if I triple click really fast here, it selects everything between those two paragraph markers, that paragraph. Not what we see as a paragraph, but wherever we hit the enter key on the keyboard. So when I triple click here, you can see it just selected what appears to be the line. But according to Microsoft Word, we got a paragraph marker here, one above it, that it selects everything in between those two, so it sees this as its own paragraph. Let me go ahead and turn off those codes. You can also select your text by coming over to the left-hand side in the margin, and notice that it goes from an I-beam when I go over into the margin to an arrow pointing inwards, that when you click, it selects the entire line. So if I click and drag down or drag up, oh, isn't that fun? You can also hold down the Control key and click down here to select additional lines, and also hold down the Control key and double-click here, click and drag there. Well, you get the idea. Then go ahead and click off to deselect all that. You can also do block selections, so with my cursor flashing there, if I hold down the shift key and I click down here, it selects everything from the flashing cursor down to where I clicked. Click off. What about shortcut keys? Well, as you recall, when I hit the left arrow key, I go to the left and go to the right, but if I hold down the shift key and I hit the right arrow key, it selects it character by character or letter by letter. But if I hold down the control shift key and I hit the right arrow key, it'll do it word by word. Let me go ahead and click off. I can also select everything from that point where the cursor is flashing to the end of the document or to the beginning of the document. So for example, like to the end from that point, go ahead and do control shift end and it automatically takes us right to the end of the document from that point. Let me go ahead and click and drag the scroll bar up so you can see that it selected everything from that point to the end, let me go ahead and click back there again, Control shift home everything from that point to the beginning of the document, well, let me scroll down, that point there, click off. And finally, if you want to select everything within your document, Control a Everything has been selected from top to bottom. Well, except those that are in the headers and footers, which we'll talk about in a later training video. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.